And judgment here for the top-ranked Cornhuskers of Nebraska. They come in to play an old rival, Missouri, and they have dominated Mizzou through the years, but the Tigers are ready now. They're on a three-game winning streak. Four weeks back, Corby Jones, a 20-yard touchdown run against Texas, and Missouri was on its way, 37-29. But at Oklahoma State, they had to rally late. Jones, 38 yards to Ricky Ross. Then in double overtime, it was Corby, number seven, a 15-yard TD run. Mizzou wins again, and then into Boulder, Colorado. They dominated the clock for more than 42 minutes, and they won going away 41-31. Now, moments ago, Jack Arut spoke with Coach Smith as he came out of the locker room. Jack? And Brady told me that in the locker room, he very quietly told his players, play and be yourselves. The same can't be said, though, for Larry Smith. When I asked him what it meant to him emotionally to be on the sidelines in this game, Brent, he couldn't answer me. He broke down in tears. That's the kind of emotional roller coaster that Larry Smith has ridden here at Missouri. But he's back, and they're back here today in Judgment Day to try and beat their foe, Nebraska. And on the other side, the man who won 250 games faster than any coach in history, Tom Osborne, did it last week against Oklahoma. The big red machine, and until proven otherwise, this, in my opinion, is clearly, clearly the number one team in the nation. I don't care how many telephones or graduates you got. You got to beat this team on the field, ladies and gentlemen. That's where it belongs. And Chris Brown, number 35, will kick it off for the Cornhuskers. Ricky Ross and Devin West are standing back at the four-yard line and will be underway here in Columbia. to the 21 yard line where we will take a look at Corby Jones number seven fine improving quarterback and Brock Olivo the all time rusher here at Missouri an effort man wide receivers Kent Lehman maturing for the Tigers as the fall progresses he's the go to guy number 84 but here's the key how will this line hold up Travis Beeble can he get the job done against Wistrom today we're about to find out the first play of the game now for Corby Jones against this great Nebraska defense. One touchdown in three weeks. Straight eye. Jones going to throw it on first down. Gets one on one and a completion. Number 84 and there is Lehman making the first reception so it didn't take Jones long to get the ball up against this defense. They know they can't sit in and run against Jason and Grant Wistrom all day long. Perhaps two of the finest defensive linemen in college football today. Octavius McFarlane scooped up a fumble against Oklahoma and sent Nebraska on their way a week ago. Erwin Sweeney is number 16. He's a freshman. He's over on the left corner defensively right now, lining up. Missouri is going to test him. They show eight in the box right now, and Sweeney goes with a motion man, and Olivo with his first carry, and it's a first down, Missouri. There's the difference. The first six games, when they were struggling, they rallied after a nightmare of a loss to Kansas State. And over their last three games, 495 yards, Dan. And Brent, you talked about the time of possession that they had last week against Colorado. Well, that's really been the key. Each game this year, they have had the advantage in the time of possession. And the key for them has been Good plays on first down. And right straight ahead goes Corby Jones. Jones, the junior from right here in Columbia. His daddy is the defensive line coach of the Tigers. His daddy, Curtis Jones, played here in Missouri as a 220-pound defensive end. Well, that's what Corby weighs right now. And this field, as you can see, has been torn up in rain during the week. And uh, it's real soft in the middle of the field between the hash marks. He's a good eight yards behind Corby. Long reach. Corby sprints out right. Going to throw it to an open band. It's Brooks. 35, 30, 25. Out of bounds at the 22. The crowd alive in Columbia on the opening drive for Corby Jones and the Tigers. It's a play action fake. And from the far side here, 
That's the backside tight end. This is number three, Eddie Brooks coming out of the backfield. It's a huge game for Missouri as they just have a whole lot of momentum and confidence operating with number seven right now. Mike Brown and Sweeney caught up in the coverage. And Brooks comes free as the clock comes on down. 10-23, the best defense against Nebraska. Keep possession of the ball. Chains to the 18-yard line. And again, that clock continues to tick away. The big red, they haven't touched it yet here this afternoon. A key third down conversion on third and short, and then the fourth down and one when uh, they come up with the big line, the big backs in the backfield, and give it to Blackwell, but they have four running backs that can do a, a lot of damage, plus number seven. So against Osborne's defense, they've taken it down more than five minutes already. Second down and seven for the Tigers, and Corby changes it up. Olivo gets so deep, has to come up to get a quick count on it. Short drop, going to throw to Faith for the corner against Brown, incomplete. Kent Lehman, the intended receiver, and Corby wanted him one-on-one -on -one for the fade. This offensive line has been run blocking extremely well last couple of games. Well, today they're giving Jones a lot of time to throw as well. Quick three-step drop that time, and Corby just overthrew his receiver. That might have been a jump ball situation in the corner of the end zone. How about this for ball control? Right now, 11th play coming up, Brent. against Nebraska. Third down and seven. That's Oliva. In motion. But he's going to throw in a hurry. Spins away beautifully. 20-15. Goes for the first down and out of bounds. At the corner. Beautiful spinning move with Brian Shaw saving the touchdown over there. Actually, it's Brian Shaw who can't bring down the 220-pound Corby Jones. This effort is just outstanding. This is the way he's been playing the last three weeks. Watch the effort to get into the end zone as he breaks another tackle. That one's Mike Brown. And finally, Jay Foreman comes over. I'm not so sure that ball wasn't across the goal line. Corby on a quick handoff, and Olivo over the top. Missouri strikes first. Attempting the extra point. Missouri, seven. Nebraska, nothing. But perhaps more important than anything is that for five and a half minutes, Nebraska has not touched the football. Brock Olivo, the all-time leading rusher at Mizzou, over the top for the game's first score. Judgment day indeed for Nebraska. Missouri, seven. Nebraska, nothing. And finally, the Cornhuskers will handle the ball with 9.23 left in the opening period. Short and high. Walker from the 9-20. Down at the 25-yard line. So Scott Frost, number seven, will bring the offense out here for Coach Osborne. Amon Green, over 1,000 yards rushing. And our Chili's lineup also features Joel Makovica at fullback. Kenny Cheatham, number six, steps into that starting lineup today for the Big Red. Behind their usual assortment of great offensive blockers, Josh Heskew played awfully well against Oklahoma. A week ago, here's the first down. Great option team. Frost, Makabeka, and Green. Sheldon Jackson, the tight end.
Frost going to throw on first down. Cheatham reaches down incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. The front four for Missouri defensively today. And this is the group that must hold up. Marquise Gibson has been a great rush man, but is he big enough against this stout offensive line? We're about to find out. Huge change at the linebacking core. Kevin Ford moves back to Bandit. He was an inside man a few weeks back. And in the defensive backfield, Wade Perkins, number 22, draws the start today. Bobby Newcomb. Out wide is a receiver. Frost runs the option. Here's a pitch to Amon Green, and he's blasted after a one-yard gain. Barry Odom and Justin Wyatt, number 39 and number 90, are there defensively for the Tigers. This is a great start for the Missouri defense, almost as good as their offensive start was. Watch the speed here. You talked about Wyatt as he and Gibson run a stunt at the top of the screen. Gibson takes away the inside, and there's just no place for Ramon Green. Third down and eight for the Huskers. Now option to the wide side. Ramon Green trying to catch the corner, and he is out of bounds at the 37. That's a first down for Nebraska. This is an excellent play on third down as the two receivers on this side ran off the defensive backs and watch the effort now by Amon Green as he's going to lower his head and dive and pick up the first down. Cheat him out wide to the right. Wiggins to the left for Frost. And Frost to the 31 with Erickson hanging on. So right away, number 94 gets in on the action. Yeah, he's been playing quite a bit lately. They've been running in uh, Erickson and Jeff Marriott because of what you talked about. They they get worn down at, at certain parts of the game. And when you go up against Nebraska, they have so many players. Their off second offensive line is almost as good as their first offensive line. Jeff Lake, who's been a bit nicked up, checks in along with Lance Brown, who is the wingback. And Frost here on second and five. Brings the option. Now the pitch to Amon Green. Green for the first down. Free. And finally out of bounds, but inside the 15-yard line. Easter, the strong safety from Houston, pushing him out. But you can see now the Big Red marching down the field. That's 18 more yards. Watch the strength of Amon Green as he's going to break the arm tackle of number 90, Justin Wyatt. And Wyatt's a big man, but Green, with good leverage that time, gets down all the way inside the 15-yard line. First down and 10 inside the 15. Makovic on a spinner for perhaps a yard. A young man who has not lost any yardage yet this season. And of course, he shouldn't be losing too many yards from that up back or fullback position. But that time, Al Sterling stopped him about as close to the line of scrimmage as you can make it. Makovic a week ago scoring three touchdowns. Dan, you had a very good point. You've never seen a fullback walk in untouched as many times as Makovic did a week ago. He had three touchdowns. One was from about five yards out, another one from about 35, another one from 32, and, and he was not touched on any of them. High snap. Frost brings it down. Six points. Not to be denied. Scott Frost into the end zone. Brent, 16 yards and a great effort going over three Tigers at about the two-yard line. Here is Chris Brown, one of the best kickers in college football. When you want to argue about who's number one, do not overlook the kicking game and do not overlook the improvement of number seven. Scott Frost is quickly becoming one of the most dangerous all-around quarterbacks in the game. Watch this run. It's like Marcus Allen. Take it on in, number seven. And we're tied. Nebraska seven, Missouri seven. 5.09 to go in the first quarter. Two possessions and two touchdowns. And, uh, well, Scott decided to take the rest of the day off. I don't think so. <laughs> here's, here's Chris Brown completely out of the end zone. 
Ernest Blackwell and Devin West are now the running backs. The fullback is very dangerous here. Blackwell. Lehman goes in motion for Mizzou. This will be West behind the left side. And you can see how they stopped him with Grant Wistrom, number 98. And over on the sideline, Scott Frost putting on the flak jacket, now puts the shoulder pads back on, and he'll be ready to go. He is a warrior. He must have had a problem with his pads. Uh, putting the flak jacket on, that's probably part of his normal equipment. He must have uh, ripped something loose with that great dive into the end zone. Second down and seven. Keeping Lehman in motion, trying to get him against that freshman. Kirby rolls, keeps it, and he has stopped short of the 25-yard line. So nothing doing right now for Missouri with Mike Rucker along with Jay Foreman. So the linebacker is moving quicker to stop Corby Jones and take the keeper away from him on that slant play on this series. Well, what happens, Brent, is the linemen get double teamed a lot, so that means the linebackers are free to flow. Nobody gets a very good block on number 44. Chuck Foreman's son. Fine young linebacker, third and five. Now Jones roll left. Steps away from trouble, but no longer. Down in a heap, sacked at the 19-yard line. Jason Peter, number 55, leads the way that time. Jason Wiltz was also there, but there is a great defensive tackle, number 55. Boy, there's just one Husker after another coming after Corby Jones here. There's two go flying by, and then on the outside, Ortiz flies by and turns him back into the red pants of Nebraska. So here it is three and out and Jason Smith and a punt first for Missouri. Newcomb the middle man. Let's see if they punt away into the side. This is going to be a short and Nebraska will wind up with outstanding field position. A short field for Scott Frost. And the Cornhuskers coming up. You know coaches. <laughs> First down and ten. Here's the toss to Amon looking for an alley. Grease is there. And Amon Green battles his way to the 27-yard line. Perhaps overlooked in the discussion of great running backs. But a man who continues to pile up the yards. 15 more for Amon. This is just great patience. And usually you get this with a good running back behind a good offensive line. Look at that. Makovica gets into the mix. And it's another big game for Amon Green as he's almost halfway to 100. 2.42 to go. Score is tied as Missouri struck first here in Columbia. Now the Cornhuskers. Bobble the snap. Now a late handoff to Amon. Slow down at the 21 yard line. Still picked up six yards on Ed Carey. Well, when you go back to that punt, and, and even before that, the sack of Corby Jones of seven yards, and you see how important field position is. Last week, Nebraska had an incredible field position against Oklahoma. They come back, they answer the opening touchdown by Missouri with a nice 74 yard drive of their own, and now on offense, they just go half, they go half the field. Shevin Wiggins and Matt Davison in on offense. They're the wideouts. Here's McAvicka. There's the play that netted three touchdowns. This time it nets a first down inside the 15-yard line, and Piercy the safety making the stop for the Tigers. Now for a 235-pound fullback, McAvicka has pretty nifty feet. Little belly play here. Makes a couple of moves there. Gets all the way to the safety and all the way inside the 15. Brainerd, Nebraska played eight man football. As many of the Nebraska fullbacks through the years have come out of that eight man program in that state. 130 to go coming up on a first down and 10 for Nebraska inside the 15 yard line. 7-7. Seven, seven. Scott Frost on a keeper again. Cuts back into the middle and he's going to be down at the two yard line he is an awesome runner because he's not scared to take punishment 
He's unbelievable. He takes you on like a fullback. Well, remember the shot he took from Kevin Brown earlier in the game when he was getting up off the ground? I think he's mad. And when you add a little anger to uh, athletic ability like that, look how far he takes Chad Chris down the field after contact. Here's your second down and goal. Remember McAvicka, but this time Frost is hit. Spins away to the right. And touchdown, Nebraska. Delayed call. They waited to see. And Frost scores his second touchdown of this game. And 12th of the season. But it's the effort here, Fred. You call that he gets hit right there short of the end zone, but he spins across and clearly gets into the end zone for his second of the day. I guess the lesson here is don't make Scott Frost mad. Indeed. When you see him start to undress on that sideline, beware. <laughs> Let me go put on some more pass. Yeah. So the extra point is good. And just like that, two possessions, two scores. Missouri woke him up. It's 14-7 Cornhuskers. West and Ross back deep. On the ground. High, tough bounce. Ricky Ross has got it. Sprints left. 25, alley 30. 35. Brown blocked near midfield. Number three, a defensive starter for the Huskers, Eric Warfield, may have saved the day for Nebraska. Chris Brown was coming over on the play, and he was blocked. And he was blocked by Devin West, number 32. 47-yard return now for Ricky Ross. Look at the effort out in front there. That may have been an illegal block, but Ford did turn his back on the blocker. And that's exactly what Missouri needs, is a short field. And they've got one, Dan, 48 yards. Let's see if they can make it work for them. Corby fakes the handoff. Sprint right, got it. Makes three at the 30-yard line. Murchison and out of bounds. Great effort that time by number 81, Jay Murchison, the senior from Richmond, Virginia. A couple of weeks ago, Corby Jones got together with his wide receivers, and he asked them to make big plays. This is a pretty good throw by Jones, and a great effort that he never saw by his wide receiver, Jay Murchison. Watch as he spins away from Brown. He gets a little help from his tight end and sets up the offense in good shape here at the end of the first quarter. Well, there's been a lot of hype about a lot of football games this week. But I'll tell you one thing. This one is as good as any through one quarter. 14-7. Corby Jones and the Tigers strike first. But Scott Frost, Tom Osborne, and the Huskers come right back. And it's 14-7. We'll be back. <laughs> right, and here it's 14-7. Nebraska with the lead. Charles... Woodson, oh, Dan Fouts loves that score. <laughs> Keep him up to date on that one. Forget Michigan and Penn State. Get on that Oregon right away in New York. First down and 10. A pullback for Missouri. Gained a couple of yards. Ernest Blackwell, he's more of a running threat than James. James, the wide body blocker. So when 33 checks in, you can expect him to get right in the middle of the action. He mentioned Charles Woodson. Folks, there are three players who deserve serious consideration now. You know, you got to wait till November to see who the players are. Ricky Williams at Texas, Charles Woodson at Michigan, and, of course, Peyton Manning at Tennessee. There's your three ringleaders for the high school. Second down and eight, and James is in at that pullback spot. Corby going to show option and pullback from it. He's got a man wide open. Through the years, the 
this has been the best option pass of all. And I remember Tony Rice at Notre Dame using this to perfection for Lou Holtz. And here today, it works for Corby Jones and Missouri. Scott Nickman for the point to tie it. So for three weeks, Nebraska allows only one touchdown. And here in the first half, Missouri strikes and scores twice. Getting behind the secondary, Coleman is wide open. Great fake. You've got to be able to run that option. And he jumped a little bit, but he hung on. We'll be right back. Missouri battles back to tie number one ranked Nebraska. It's 14 all right now, and they've already qualified for that bowl. Where will they go? San Antonio, perhaps. Tucson, maybe. Honolulu. It's all up in the air now. On the ground. Fielded at the 13-yard line by Walker. The flag is down. There is a flag on the return by Walker. Second down and five. Option from Frost. To the 35 40. 45 and finally out of bounds as he tight work walked the sideline at the 48 yard line and a first down for Nebraska. 15 more yards and there's a pair. Wistrom and Peter. But the defense over here has to be concerned. And uh, Dan, you made the point about Wistrom. And a uh, possible leg injury, you said? Brent, he uh, has a bruised thigh that's real close to his knee. And what happens then is you get all this fluid that seeps down into the knee and makes the knee very sore. But you sure can't tell by the way he plays. First down. Frost in the eye. Fake to Amon. Wide open. Another first down. A beautiful pattern run by Sheldon Jackson, the pass receiving tight end that time, number 88. Boy, just like that, in two plays, Nebraska picks up 30 yards. Frost is so determined, though. It's just it's great to watch his improvement from just a year ago. No pass rush at all, and a wide open tight end. Kenny Cheatham off to the quarterback's left here on first down. Ball is at the Missouri 36 yard line. Nebraska and Missouri tied at 14. And Amon Green is stopped on first down. Harold Piercy joined the fray again from that safety spot, helping out on that tackle. Barry Odom threw a shoe making that tackle on Amon Green. That's a big hit when uh, your shoe comes off when you tackle a guy. Oscar's offensive line will get down for the second and eight. Wade Perkins, number 22, is the new corner. Frost options wide side, pitch him on three. Out of bounds, but inside the 30-yard line and short of a first down. So a third down coming up here for the Huskers. That was Shad Chris, number five. Certainly one of their best defensive backs. You know, Brent, it looked like uh, Missouri did a good job of stringing this play out Sam Joshua number 51 there but then you look up and uh, Green gets real close to a first down even when Missouri seems to make a good play on defense Nebraska's picking up yardage third down and two can they stop McAvick and Green here McAvick leads Green searches searches got it inside the 20 now breaks free and I'm on Green to the seven yard line Almost turned a first down into a touchdown run. 21 yards, bad tackling on the corner by the Tigers. You know, a lot of his success today, Brent, and all season long, has come to the short side of the field. This offensive line is just blotting out any black shirt there is. Taylor getting way down the field to add another key block. Easter hanging on from behind, or it would have been six. 11 carries. 86 yards for Amon Green. Tied at 14. 11 and a half to go. On the first and goal. And they blast straight ahead with Amon Green for the 
touchdown. Seven yards for Oman. Larry Smith's biggest fear is that his defense would get worn down. They haven't come close to stopping Nebraska yet. Brown again. And he boosts Nebraska back into a seven point advantage here. Larry Smith, 21 years a head coach. After he was dumped by USC, he sat out a year. How big a mistake was that for the Trojans? We'll be right back. 21 14, Nebraska in a wide open affair here in Columbia, Missouri. 10 08 to go in the first half. Meanwhile, Michigan running roughshod over Penn State. He fielded in the end zone and on a delay, a decision, and you can pay a price for that one, and he does. Devin West hesitated, and he who does is normally lost against the coverage teams for Nebraska, amongst the best in the country. Kirby's back in that shotgun look. Nebraska brings a blitz at him, and Corby throws it down the middle, has to throw in a hurry. He's got a man at the 30-yard line. Ricky Ross again. Eric Johnson was the blitzing linebacker that time. There was no time. Corby arched it. It's 36 yards against Ralph Brown, the sophomore cornerback. Kirby did this against Oklahoma State where he just lofted the ball up in the air for Ricky Ross and that one came down as a touchdown. Ross out battles Brown for this ball and lucky for Nebraska that Ross loses his footing here or he's in the end zone. Great concentration to make the catch. So Corby Jones driving Missouri for Larry Smith through the air. 7.13 to go. First and 10. The Tigers against number one now. Jones hands off to the fullback. Blackwell checks back into the game. Down at the 27-yard line into the heart of that defense. Keeping them honest. You know, on that last play, there was a great blitz pickup by the running back. Dan, watch Brock Olivo on this play. Well, here he is right here, number 27. This guy does it all for Missouri. Works on special teams and now gives his quarterback time to throw the bomb. And Eric Johnson, the junior linebacker, could not get there. Second down and six. Lot James back in at fullback for Missouri. This is more yards, and the Cornhuskers give up in a game here in the first half. The way Corby's got it rolling. Good fake. In trouble, though. Down at the 39-yard line. Mike Rucker coming in from that other side, along with Grant Wistrom, getting the job done. And that sack will put Missouri on the other side of the 30-yard line. It'll be third down and 13 after the seven-yard loss. That's a pair of seven-yard losses now for Corby Jones. Watch how fast Nebraska players get off the ground. Wistrom does not allow himself to be held or tackled there. He gets in on the sack. Now let's see what Corby can come up with. Nebraska shows pressure. They like to come in this situation. Right back to Corby. They're going to throw the flare to Olivo, and it's defended, but he breaks a tackle. 25, bang out of bounds at the 22-yard line by Mike Brown. Short of a first down. That's 11 yards. It leaves them two yards shy of the first down. But what it does is it puts the field goal kicker in range. Nickman will now try a field goal instead of bringing out the punt team because of this effort. Breaks the tackle there and then a big hit coming by number 21 Mike Brown right there. But that sets up Nickman in very makeable range. If Nebraska shows pressure what a great spot for a fake field goal. But they've got a man standing back at the linebacking position and Nickman's going to go ahead with the kick. And he's got it. A 39-yard field goal. Nebraska leads Missouri, but the Tigers chip away again. Yeah, 
Well, finally, Coach Norm Stewart has a football team that the basketball team here at Missouri could be proud of. Coach, a big time football fan. He's been around today watching, moving around the press box. Basketball team will be getting ready here soon for everybody across the country. Great time of year. 5.25 to go, 21 17. Missouri after the field goal. Kicks in to the one yard line. To the 10 is Joe Walker. Walker cuts over to the left. Down at the 23. And here, Scott Frost in Nebraska realizes not a lot in the first half. And on that delay, that was his man again, number 30, Amon Green, on the delay before Wade Perkins, the cornerback, could make the stop. But 18 yards later, and another Nebraska first down. So Amon Green has been leading the way for the Cornhuskers today. 13 carries and 111 yards. All right, first down and 10. And Frost keeps it. Big gap. First down for the Huskers. Ball is whistled dead. I think you can hear the whistle before the ball came free. There was no question about that call by the officials. A 12-yard run for Scott Frost. Dan, let me ask you this. You played so many great years in the NFL, and, and it's a question about Frost as a, as a pure thrower, which is what the NFL like. What would you do with this young man? He's such a good athlete in the NFL. Well, he's. I think he's a, a potentially a safety in the NFL. I, I like the fact that he's a, a tough guy, Not doesn't shy away from contact. People are booing because they see the jumbotron here. They think it's a fumble. But uh, I think Frost has a future in the NFL. Not a quarterback. I think he's on the other side of the ball. Yeah, clearly the whistle was blown, though. We, we, I suppose we had the advantage of hearing it. Intercepted. Chris is standing there. And Chad Chris with speed brings it to the 40. 45. Penalty flag down at midfield as Shad Chris may have just made the biggest play of the first half. It has been a first half of a lot of big plays. This is the first one for the Missouri defense. You're right, Brent. Watch Chris just stand here, wait for this ball to come down. As he comes off the receiver on the outside, Matt Davidson, and they're going to get uh, the penalty against Missouri here on the return. I don't think Scott Frost ever saw Chad Chris. And it's a personal foul call. Oh, it's going Nebraska. against Nebraska. Yeah. Tack it on, baby, and bring it to the other side of it. Jeff Marriott may have caused that interception. I think he caused Frost to have to throw off the back foot when the big sophomore nose guard broke in on him. And now, with the personal foul, and Tom wants to know who it is, who lost his poise out there, because he'll be talking to the young man, and the ball is put down the 35-yard line. And now can Corby take it in again and regain the lead? What a first half. And I think you're right about uh, the pressure. And I also think that Frost was looking into the sun and never saw Chris. All right, so here we go. Hang on. The Tigers stalking that lead again. Play fake, Corby rolls right, got all kinds of time back, wide open to Levo, 10 yard line, touchdown, Missouri, Mizzou leads it, 35 yards. are coming up next on ABC. It's a happening in Columbia, Missouri. 
29-point underdogs, and the Tigers against the top-ranked team in the nation lead it 24-21, and a lot of football left. Wiggins and Walker back deep with Nickman kicking it off to start the second half. Larry Smith's biggest decision here at the intermission is to find a punter. Got to turn the quarterback loose, I would think. Let Corby Jones be your punter. That almost killed him. Here's a kickoff into the corner now. Walker picks it up at the 5, 15, runs hard, 25, 30, sprints outside to the 40, 45. Walker cuts inside. Here comes the big red machine. And Larry Smith's got to be happy that Martez Young was his safety, number eight. Watch the wedge work here first for Joe Walker. McAvick right in the middle there with a key block on Olivo. He runs away from the kicker. Now watch number eight, Martez Young. And he saves a day temporarily for Missouri. Scott Frost quickly brings the Nebraska offense up. McAvick slams to the 48-yard line. And Marriott, the nose man, 93, is there. Second down and eight now. Frost on a fake. Going to throw back. Screen over here on this side to Amon Green on a cutback. And Green breaks free. 30, 25. Angle and out of bounds. And that is Harold Piercy who saved the touchdown. It's a throwback screen to Amon Green. Frost is going to come out here. Green is going to go this way. And this is perfectly executed by Nebraska. Missouri absolutely loses Green, and he's got a convoy out front. And Piercy saves the day. First down at the 13-yard line. With 4.05 to go in the third. With Jack Root, Dan Fouts, I'm Brent Musburger. Nebraska trailing, but Macavica, their fullback, their walk-on fullback. Pounding down close to the 10-yard line on a first down. Back of Vicka looks like he's wishing for the good old days of seven days ago. Where is that Oklahoma defense when we need it, huh, partner? <laughs> he's getting touched a bit today. Three and a half minutes left here in the third. see where the officials say it is down. I never heard a whistle blow, Brent. No, I didn't either. Scott Frost probably would have been a lot wiser. He had a first down, not to be reaching out like that for the end zone, but I think they may have whistled that it's down anyway. Yeah, he was down by rule. So it will be first and goal for the Huskers. You know, Brent, this is uh, at the end of this play. Frost is down, clearly down. The ball came out when it hit the ground. All Nebraska's done. It's gone 98 yards now. Frost has scored twice already today, and he puts it right in. And Scott Frost puts it in for the third time today. Nebraska regains the lead. Three minutes to go in the third quarter. A struggle for Tom Osborne's Cornhuskers. Top ranked and favored by four touchdowns here in Columbia, Missouri. A 99-yard drive for the Cornhuskers. The big play, Newcomb's juggling catch on second down. And then the Amon Green screen pass. There's the extra point added by Chris Brown. So the freshman sensation for the Cornhuskers. Bobby Newcomb, six foot, 185 pounds. He'll be right back. Moving over the Big 12. Colorado has to rally. Oklahoma State with another big win. Texas A&M driving toward the Big 12 title game. And Kansas State wins again under Bill Snyder. They could be headed for the Fiesta Bowl with a Sugar Bowl. Here it is Chris Brown kicking it off. And now Missouri must answer the call again. Coming out 
this time is Devin West. Here it is, 30-yard line, 3, 40, 45, 50, into Nebraska territory, and finally now at the 35-yard line, Devin West, 58 yards for Mizzou. away and unfortunately tangles up his feet but he gives his team 35 yards from a score and as a reward he's in at tailback Corby Jones the do-everything quarterback brings the option in trouble spins back the other way beautifully got an open man it's Brooks fast out of bounds as Corby Jones shows you how well he can create on the move 14 more yards he's a magician He's very athletic. This play, obviously, was not designed for Corby Jones to run over here and then run around there like that. This is just pure athletic ability. The Cornhuskers come with a great pass rush here, but again, they fail to cover a receiver from Missouri. Ernest Blackwell is the fullback directly behind Corby Jones with speed. They bring the option, and Corby keeps it. Corby inside the 20, and he is down at the 17-yard line on first down. Jay Foreman, the son of the former Minnesota Viking great Chuck Foreman, number 44, the middle linebacker for the Huskers, makes the stop. And the, the one thing that the Corn Huskers have done very well is shut down the run since the first quarter. And maybe it's because uh, they're getting good play from the other side of the defensive line. That's Jason Peter and uh, Grant Wistrom there that time, but it looks like Missouri's trying to run away from them. They've not had any success running the ball since the first drive of the first quarter. Here's second down at seven for Kirby. Slot is off to the wide side of the field for Mizzou. A play fake, and Kirby rolls in that direction. He's going to throw the flare pass to Blackwell. Blackwell battling inside the 10-yard line. First down, Ooh. Mizzou. Team named Desire. Under Larry Smith, it took him four years and a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah, I mean, it looks like Larry Smith can't believe what he's seeing out here. He knows he has big, strong running backs. None any stronger than Blackwell as he picks up the first down. Nebraska leading Missouri 28-24. They've been trading the lead, and Missouri drives down for a first and goal at the 10. And the fullback, Blackwell, to the six-yard line into the heart of the Nebraska defense with Dan Fouts and Jack Aroot. I'm Brent Musburger. Nice to have you along with us. It figures to be a wonderful fourth quarter. Just a great setting here in Columbia, Missouri. A program that has come back with three straight wins. They're at the line right now. Second down and goal. Corby on the option, the keeper to the six-yard line and hit hard. You can see Foreman is there. Rucker, who has played a whale of a game at that other defensive end spot for Nebraska coming in on the backside with a minute to go here in the third quarter for Larry Smith who will have a big decision to make third down Devin West the running back Corby's going to go back deep drop try to throw back not there going to sprint now outrun Rucker dives for the end zone goes airborne Corby Jones touchdown over the top This is a stuff of fairy tales. You're a 29 point underdog, and you're back ahead again, and you're trading shots with the number one team in the country. You're going blow for blow. And Corby Jones is showing most of the country right now why he is one of the finest all around quarterbacks in the country today. Watch Corby Jones. 
create something when nothing is there. And remember, this Nebraska defense had given up only one touchdown in three weeks prior to coming to Mizzou. Timeout. And Missouri leading again, 31-28, over the top-ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers. Dropping it to Walker all game long, and he does again. He'll try to defend from the nine. Left side return, Walker looks for the alley, out to the 30-yard line, and down. Double tight end, power formation for the Huskers. Straight ahead is Amon to the 34-yard line. Picks up four yards before Donnell Jones, the nose guard, brings him in. Jack Root, I can't say enough about Corby Jones. This is one of the most impressive quarterbacking jobs I've seen in a long time. And Brent, what a change from the game we did at Ohio State. Remember, Corby played with a lot of emotion, but after that Andy Katzenmeyer hit, he was literally emotionally out of the game. All this game, he's very controlled in terms of emotion. The worst that's happened to him, last series he got a bloody nose. He walked off and said, fix it. End of three. Listen to the crowd in Columbia. Tom Osborne at number one, under fire. Sports presentation of Nebraska, Missouri returns after this message and a word from our ABC station. <laughs> Nebraska's last loss in Columbia, Missouri, back in 1973. For Tom Osborne, as he looks across the sideline, there's only one player on the other side who was even alive when Missouri last won here. Second down and six. Here's the toss to Amon Green. They spread him out, and now he barges for the first down and crosses midfield. And Nebraska can play with a short field. Odom again. Nebraska's been hurt by a couple of turnovers here today, an interception and a fumble. On both occasions, they could have been driving for a touchdown. You don't know what's going to happen, obviously, after a turnover. But there were two big keys in this game, one in the first half and one in the second. Now again, Frost and the Huskers on the drive. Missouri trying to hold up in the middle of that defensive line. They're going to pound away with Green. And Green is stuck by Easter, the strong safety from Houston, Texas, number one. This has been a wonderful, wonderful college football game, and you can see how Frost and Jones have traded moments in this game. Yeah, it's been the throwing of Corby Jones and the running of Scott Frost. Frost is over 100 yards rushing, but uh, Jones can run too a little bit, huh? That six-yard touchdown. Second and six. Frost is eyeing the field. Missouri presses the box, expecting the option. They got it, and Frost cuts for the first down. Still so hard to bring down with that second effort. Clock can't move fast enough for Smith. Second down and 10. Here's the delay, and Amon Green is stood up at the 30-yard line. On second down, they hope to catch him unawares and pop one with green and now Mo Anke, the defensive coordinator must come up with the call here because here it is third and eight Sterling's the linebacker who made the play in the hole and here we come for Nebraska I would expect number 12 Bobby Newcomb to be coming on the field and here he comes Nebraska comes out with four wide receivers but don't be surprised if Frost runs with this one Here's third down, Newcomb to the short side, the slot man, and Frost keeps it. You called it, and Missouri expecting it. That was Marquise Gibson, the undersized defensive end, the junior from Florida, making the play, and none bigger defensively for Mizzou in this game. Very conservative play selection for Tom Osborne. But what he knows is in his uh, bag of tricks, he's got a great kicker. This option doesn't fool anybody in black shirts, right? Trying to run the option to the short side of the field. Marquise Gibson with a big play. Now for the record, Chris Brown. Can he keep the consecutive string alive? 44 yards on the field goal. A great leg. The Nebraska record for consecutive field goals. 
10 straight field goals for Chris Brown. So with 10.50 to go, Missouri and Nebraska are tied at 31. We'll be right back. Favored by more than four touchdowns. Nebraska tied with Missouri right now at 31. After a field goal by Chris Brown, it's 10th in a row. Now he'll kick it off. And Missouri will bring it up on the 20-yard line. Olivo back in at running back. James is the fullback. Ricky Ross, one of the wideouts. Corby Jones. Takes it back, going to get hit as he releases into the middle. Double team, Lehman, incomplete. A collision at the 30-yard line, but hit on the release. Great job by Nebraska secondary. Eric Warfield came, on over, came over from the weak safety position, but Chad Kelsey really gets good pressure on the quarterback this time. Corby shouldn't have thrown this one. This is into double coverage. Sweeney has him covered by himself. And Sweeney should have made the interception. But I think Warfield distracted him. Second and ten. Sweeney, a freshman, number 16. Locks up one-on-one. -on -one. Corby runs the option to the corner. He's going to keep it. It's wide open. 35, 40, 45. Crosses midfield and out of bounds. So the pitch man was taken by the outside rush man. As soon as the outside rush man went upfield, Corby Jones seized the corner and ran 34 yards. Great recognition by number seven. Now, anytime you run the option play, you're going to have to get some great blocks. And anytime you bust a big one like that one, Kent Lehman, number 84, is going to get the key block when we get to show you in a moment. 10-15. First down and 10 from the 46-yard line. Olivo and back to that big play by Jones. Well, Lehman is number 84. He's to the right, left side of the screen. They take the pitch man away, and then Warfield gets pinned inside by Lehman. And then watch at the end of this play. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Corby Jones is good as lucky today. He fumbled that ball, but the ball bounced right back onto his chest. No time to be satisfied. They're back to second and five. Ball is just shy of the Cornhuskers' 40-yard line. Nine and a half minutes to go in regulation. Lehman goes up to the left-hand side. They'll show the shotgun or passing look for Corby. The ends crash, picked up, sideline deflected and picked off. Intercepted on the sideline by Nebraska. At the 22-yard line, Joe Walker intercepts for the Huskers. This ball is going to be deflected halfway to the receiver by number 84, Mike Rucker. Rucker leaps up, knocks the ball. That ball might have been completed, and Walker makes a great catch. We've seen Rucker make plays in the backfield. That time he dropped from his defensive end position in his coverage and made the play. Scott Frost and Nebraska. 78 yards away. The number one team in the country with seven and a half minutes and tied at 31 in regulation in Columbia, Missouri. Frost cuts back off the option. Marquise Gibson among those hitting him at the 22-yard line. Scott Frost gets up and says, where did that guy come from? Weak side, Marquise Gibson put the pressure on Frost when he was turning back. Check out right here that play by Mike Rucker forces the ball wide of the receiver right into the hands of Joe Walker. Second and nine and Bobby Newcomb, their sensational freshman, has come down to the short side of the field. He'll be the flanker. They move the tight end over to show power that side. Frost is going to throw back to the right now. Comes back to the middle, deflected, intercepted. Missouri's got it at the 35-yard line. 
got a chance, and it's picked off by Piercy. Harold Piercy, the safety, who's been a whiz all day, gives Mizzou a shot at the 30-yard line. in front of Brock Olivo. 30 yards away from taking the lead on Nebraska in the fourth quarter. Blackwell plows to the 26-yard line, perhaps four, and Jason Peter, 55, out of Locust, New Jersey, hanging on. Really important now for Missouri to take care of the football. They're already in field goal range, and a field goal would give them the lead, obviously. They want to take time off the clock, keep the ball on the ground, let that big offensive line work as they've been working all day long. And they send an offensive tackle, Chris Meredith, wearing number 99, in the lineup. They give him both right. Ron Chains also in. It's the jumbo. And Olivo following the jumbo side to the 23-yard line. 546 left here in regulation. Yeah, Chris Meredith has been uh, their backup offensive tackle, their utility lineman, can play the left side or the right side, but recently, uh, during this winning streak of Missouri, they've had big number 99 playing a lot of tight end. He's a great blocker, and he adds a lot of beef to that offensive line. Bringing the play clock on down, seconds ticking away, trying to score and not give Nebraska too much time. Olivo again with that great effort battles his way for a first down close to the 15-yard line. Brock Olivo, who a week ago took a video camera with him because he said he wanted to record the great story that was going on with this football team. They went in and torched Colorado, their third straight victory. He's a great overachiever. He doesn't have great bursts of speed. He just somehow gets it done. And he got it done behind big number 99, Chris Meredith, who just crushed the defensive end on that side. Olivo already at the tailback spot. Perfect so far. On a fake, Kirby Jones rolls hard to right. Got him wide open, the touchdown! Missouri leads it! 4-39, Eddie Brooks all alone in the end zone! Judgment Day, and number one up for grabs. The Cornhuskers came in here ranked number one, but now their ranking is in serious jeopardy. Missouri with the lead and four and a half minutes to go. This team from Columbia, Missouri, they are the Cinderella's of this season. They have won three in a row, and now Shevin Wiggins will try to give Nebraska field position. Those three wins in a row, Brent, were all upsets. I think they're ready for another one. But Nebraska has pulled out miracles before against Missouri. 
Walker's been very busy. He also made an interception a short time ago, and then they gave it right back. Coming down the sideline, and he is out of bounds. 4.30 to go from the eye formation. Here's the toss to Amon Green. And Green is stacked up at the 29-yard line. Let's go and back and find out how this man gets so wide open after the play fake. Corby Jones is going to roll out, and it's a pick play at the bottom of the screen. Eric Warfield is picked off by the wide receiver. The officials miss it, but Corby Jones doesn't miss it. Second down and nine for Frost and Nebraska. Frost inside, fumble! Incomplete, incomplete pass. pass. Yep. Incomplete pass on that shuffle forward. Referee and Dan Fouts right on top of him. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, know, I know the difference between an interception an incompletion and a fumble. And, and this looks like the option play, but it's inverted. It's a shuffle pass, and if the guy doesn't catch it, as Amon Green takes his eyes off it, it's just an incomplete pass. Sure got these folks excited, though, didn't it? They're down at nine. Victory number 251 has not been easy. May take a while for Coach Osborne. Frost, option, now to pitch. Here's Amon. And Amon down hard at the 35. And with 3.40 to go, it is fourth down for Osborne and the Cornhuskers. Would they dare do something again? Well, the punt team? It's a good thing we just showed that uh, Bumaruski. They had better field position that time. That's great team defense by Missouri. A lot of black shirts running to the ball, and right in the middle is their defensive coach, Ricky Hudley. Jesse Cush. Sometimes the fullback, Makavica, and he's in as the upback. Makavica's the upback for Nebraska. Tom and the coaches say the defense can get it back for him. Ross Fields at the 19, and he'll be down at the 22. So when you come back, we'll have 3.30 to play. Missouri leading Nebraska, 38-31. Shoulder at the line of scrimmage on first down. Corby Jones. Ernest Blackwell and Devin West are the running backs. his way just short of the first down Eric Johnson making the stop for Nebraska and Brent you won't believe this but the sprinklers at the right end of the end of this football field have just turned on this is unbelievable this is the Missouri end zone where they're driving and there's seven or eight sprinklers that are rolling <laughs> so no, welcome to college football right Two forty-three on the clock. Devin West is the tailback. Corby on the option keeps it, cuts free for that first down. Got it. Corby Jones to the forty-yard line. First down. Two minutes to go. A fourteen-yard run for the Wizards. He's already passed for a career high. Falling upon his running ability to win this ball game. Turns it up inside, keeps his balance there, and it just overpowers the court under. First down, Mizzou. Blackwell, the fullback. Corby changes and brings that play clock down. Doesn't want to lose five yards. Gets it off that one here in Blackwell. Straight into the heart of that Nebraska defense. And Jason Peter, number 55, brings him down. And a timeout's going to be called by Nebraska. And that's their first of the second half, so they'll have two remaining. 
if they get the ball back. Right now, they haven't shown any ability to, of stopping number seven. The last win over Nebraska and the last win by Mizzou here was 1973. Second down and nine for Kirby Jones and Missouri. Here's West picking his way to the 47-yard line, short of the first down. Leave him about third and three. Wilt's making the stop for the Black Shirts. So the pressure is on Coach McBride and the defense right now to make a play and give the offense and the quarterback, Scott Frost, a chance to do some magic here with only 1.20 to go. It was indeed Judgment Day. Now third down, Judgment Day for the Nebraska defense. They must make a stop here. Corby brings the count down, brings the clock inside of five, and bring it down to one and snap it, just like an NFL veteran. Brings it on the option. Going to be short of that first down. There was a timeout left for Nebraska. And they use it right now with 1.13 to go, and Coach Smith must decide which of the punters will he use. Tom Osborne and the Huskers reeling right now. Facing a fourth down, and Jason Smith gets the quick snap and booms one. There's their best, longest punt of the year. Fielded by Newcomb. Here he comes. 30 and hit at the 33 yard line. So they do not let him break the big play that time. And Scott Frost and Nebraska will have a minute two to work with. No timeouts. For Scott Frost. Quickly in the huddle at the 33 yard line. Frost rolls hard to the right, uses the sideline, caught it out of bounds with 55 seconds to go. Kenny Cheatham. Great throw by Frost on the run. But the question is, was Cheatham inbounds? And the answer is, yes. 40 yards away from a possible tie and overtime. Frost sprints hard to the left. Fires low, incomplete. When he's incomplete, frequently, as Nebraska fans know, he will be low. He will bounce the ball. So now 51 seconds to go. Second and 10. Larry Smith and Missouri hoping to close out a monumental upset against top-ranked Nebraska. Tom Osborne and the Huskers trying to force a tie and overtime. Second down and 10. Here's Frost, the quarterback for the shotgun, deflected, incomplete, diving, incomplete, and it is third down and ten. Steve so Erickson, Erickson right there. Yep, Steve Erickson, Brent, number 94, got up and blocked that ball, and it was almost intercepted by Al Sterling. Watch 94 here. Quit on his pass rush. Watch Sterling. Boy, that's real close to being inter inter intercepted. Ball hit the ground, though. And the referee was looking right in. Now third and ten for Nebraska. Fires, got it. First down. Clock will stop at the 28 as Matt Davison, the 6'1 freshman, comes up with a big play for the Cornhuskers with 39 seconds to go. They are now 27 yards away. You think anybody's sitting down in Omaha right now? Or Lincoln? Here's Frost. Rolls to the right. Fires again at the 20 yard complete clock moving but that low throw made his receiver go down and not have the ability to get out of bounds and stop the clock and again it was Cheetah working the right side and they stopped the clock by spiking the ball with 21 seconds to go field goal won't help them they must score and then kick an extra point to force this game into overtime Mizzou and Larry Smith have been there before double overtime against Oklahoma State a win in Stillwater a couple of weeks ago and now trying to hang on 
Nebraska 20 yards away. Your third down and two is coming up. Davison and Lance Brown are off to the left. Frost wants Cheatham. Got him out of bounds. No, they're going to keep it winding. But it is a first down, remember, so the clock will stop with 14 seconds and a first down for the Cornhuskers. That was a real good throw by Scott Frost. That receiver caught that ball in self-defense. Scott Frost with first down, and he'll stop it to check with the coaches. 14 seconds and 12 yards away. Well, Dan, you have been in a situation like this so many times before as the quarterback. Teams trying to scramble and, and get a big touchdown at the end of the game. What must a quarterback remind himself of right now? Well, that you have more time than you really think. I mean, each play takes four, five, maybe six seconds. The, the key here is not rush your own mechanics. Just be cool, do what you do in practice all the time, and throw the ball as you normally would. A lot of quarterbacks here will tighten up. They might even panic a little bit here because they feel that they, they have to rush things. Nebraska comes back now. Second down. They'll line up with the shotgun. Cross will come to the wide side. To the end zone. Battle at the two-yard line. Incomplete is the rule. Davison saying he was interfered with by Shad Chris. He's the best defensive back at Missouri, and he did the job on the near side. Oh, we talk about confidence a quarterback has in a true freshman receiver, and I think Davison has a beef there. Shad Chris was all over his back. There was contact before the ball got there. Third down. Cross to the middle. Davison on the deflection. Nebraska's a point away from tying the game. The deflection is caught. The fans have broken into the end zone. They expected the game to be over. But a touchdown was signaled for in the end zone. They'll clear the field and kick for the tie. We could be headed to overtime. Well, they ought to turn the sprinklers on at that end of the field, get the fans back in the stands. This is an incredible play. Frost has all day to throw, looking over the entire field, finally sees somebody he likes. Ball is popped up in the air, kicked up in the air, and Davidson with a dive. Looks like Wiggins was the intended receiver. It looked like Wiggins kicked the ball up in the air. Now Chris Brown. The most important extra point of the season for Nebraska. Needs the good snap. And we go to overtime. Chris Brown sends Nebraska and Missouri into the first overtime. But it was a freshman wide receiver, Davison who somehow is able to make a miracle catch on a last-second deflection of what appeared to be a foot in the end zone. Ball kicked back up in the air by Shevin Wiggins, and Davison dashes in underneath it. And by just the margin of a shoelace, Nebraska has tied Missouri. We'll be right back. Crashes inside the 15-yard line. So our officials jumped the gun on us just a little bit. But thankfully, you were able to pick up on the end of that play as Amon Green was run out on the far side, and he is just short of a first down. Remember, you can get a first down here in overtime, and they would with another yard. This is second down and one. First overtime, first possession. Scores tied at 38. And Amon Green for the first down to the 12-yard line. So it will be a first down coming up here. Fresh set of downs for Nebraska. So if we had enough excitement in this one, what a great, great college football game this wound up being. And Nebraska 
knowing that their number one ranking is on the line. They haven't quit. They haven't buckled. They face down Corby Jones. Buys Tom Osborne. I keep that Adidas shoe contract after that last kick in the end zone. First down and ten. Frost runs the option, crashes inside, five, goes for the goal line, touchdown! And remember, Missouri gets a chance to respond. It's not sudden death, not like the NFL. How about four touchdowns on the ground today and tonight for Scott Frost? Remember the one he dove in earlier in the game for 15 yards out? Similar type of effort here as he sees the cone and goes right by the Tiger for the score. Chris Brown. He adds the extra point, and now Missouri needs seven to force it into a second overtime. So we have to Corby Jones trailing 45-38. Seven's kind of the magic number today, huh? Corby Jones wears seven. Scott Frost wears seven. And, and Larry Smith, he likes this record uh, of his Tigers the last couple of years with the overtime. In fact, he told his ball club this week, he said, hey, why don't we play the entire game like we play overtime? I think they have today. Ready to go from the 25. Take a running play, and Corby Jones in trouble. Sprints back, got a wide open man, chains incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. So there's a play they certainly saved for overtime. Send the big bus here in Missouri. But there were no wide open receivers that time, as Nebraska just rushed four men, dropped seven into the secondary. And uh, believe me, Ron James is never going to be your primary receiver. Only has two catches on the year. Couldn't quite make the adjustment on that pass. Second down and 10. Back into the eye with Olivo. Kobe follows Blackwell, and he is down at the 21-yard line, and it is a big third down coming up. Chad Kelsey makes a stop defensively. Oh, don't you think Chad Kelsey's a little bit upset today uh, with the way that uh, Corby Jones has pulled away from him a couple of times? Watch this hit. There's no way that Corby's going to get away from number 57 that time. Seven yards for a fresh set of down. Corby drops back from the option. Throws back. Diving reception incomplete. Had it for just an instant. And it got away from Stooping. And fourth down is coming up. But you know, Brent, why didn't they just run the ball on that third down at seven? Instead of throwing the ball, you have two downs to work with. They played that like it was a normal third down, where if they didn't complete the pass for the first down, they would have to kick. And now it is Osborne and the Cornhuskers who are a play away from a win. Jones under pressure, it's over. Nebraska wins it in overtime. A miracle finish. The Cornhuskers stay unbeaten. And a heartbreak for Missouri. Grant Wistrom and Mike Rucker close in. Osborne knows all too well that he got lucky late against Larry Smith. Missouri Tigers. It was a great college football game. Nebraska, after tying the game on a miracle catch in the end zone, beats Missouri 45-38. Judgment Day. Nebraska takes the victory, but they needed a little bit of luck to get there. So long, everybody.